Hi, I'm Mark from Microtasker.com. In this video, I'll be showing the Microtasker web browser based bootloader in operation on an AVR32. I'll be showing how to build the bootloader and also the application in the AVR Studio 5 environment, and afterwards, I'll be showing how to debug problems with the bootloader and the bootloader configuration in the Microtask simulator. For this demonstration we'll be working with the JTAG ICE Mark II from Atmel and also the Atmel EVK1100 board. The Atmel evaluation board has an AVR32 UC3A processor. It has 8 megabytes of SPI based flash and it also has an Ethernet interface. First of all we're going to build the bootloader project for this board. So I open the configuration file in the bootloader. We're interested in using the SPI as intermediate storage space so I activate SPI software upload. Since the evaluation board has the 8 megabyte chip I'm modifying the define to suit. Now I select the bootloader project and I build. In the project directory in Explorer we can go to the bootloader and then the GNU subdirectory and we see now that the build has created a bootloader.bin file this is about four and a half kilobytes in size back in AVR Studio 5 we go to the Microtask v1.4 project and we do a similar configuration to suit the board and the fact that we want to work with the bootloader in SPI flash First of all, I select the board, the EVK1100. I make sure that the SPI file system has been activated. In the hardware configuration file, application hardware AVR32, I also check that we've selected the correct flash type. Now I move back to the main project and I rebuild. Back in the Microtask project directory I can now look at the generated file. Again, it's in the GNU AVR32 directory. What we can see is that several binary files were created. This is the standalone application. This is the application suitable for operation together with the bootloader. And this one here is a combined file containing the bootloader as well as the application. This file here is a specially coded one which we will, we will later use to upload new software to the board via the web server. With the JTAG ICE Mark III connected to the board, the fastest method of loading the new code is to use this BAT file here. The board has started automatically. It's clear that it's operating due to the blinking LED. The next thing we do is to connect the Ethernet cable. The file system is operating the SPI flash, 
So the first thing we do is to take a look at the present situation by using FTP. Here we see that the file system is empty apart from one fixed file. This is a read-only file which is the favicon icon which we will see when we start working with the web server. Since we're going to be loading our new software via the web server, we need first to load some web pages. So I go into the web pages for the AVR32. Here I have a bat file which will copy them automatically. Now that the copy has taken place, we'll check via FTP to see what the new situation is in the SPI flash based file system. Here we now see that several web pages are available and then we can move on to the web server. Using a web browser I can now contact the device. Here we see several menu options for configuring the web interface or configuring some other parts of the project. Because we're concerned with downloading new software, I'm going to go to the administration page. On the administration page, we see here the input formula for uploading new software. Before actually uploading new software, I've gone back to the first page where we have here a software version which is being displayed by the code. So that we can test the upload of new software, I've gone back to AVR32 Studio and I've opened up the application.h file. Here we see the version number which is being displayed. I'm going to change this into a recognizable test version number. and I'm going to rebuild the project. What I've done now is return to the administration web page and I've positioned the evaluation board so that we can see it when we're doing the next procedure. So what I'm going to do is to first choose the file which I want to upload Okay, the file is called zupload.bin. Now this is a binary file which contains a new code but it also contains a special header so that the bootloader will be able to interpret this correctly as an upload file and then correctly respond to it. Now we're going to start the upload procedure. Watch the blinking LED here while it takes place. First of all the upload takes place very quickly. The LED stops blinking because the bootload is, is operating and now it's starting with a new code. If we watch the web browser it will update the page after a short wait and now we can see that we have the new software loaded. What we just saw in operation was a safe, reliable, practical and fast method of updating software in a remote project. However, actually setting up the application to match the bootloader can be quite complicated and there are several settings which have to uh, match exactly and mistakes can be made. So what I'm going to show now is how we can use the Microtasker simulator to test the procedure and then quickly identify and correct any configuration settings which are not matching. On the right hand side I have the web browser as normal. On the left hand side I have um, Visual Studio which is uh, going to run the Microtasker simulator for me. The project is already configured so all I have to do is to start the simulator. Here we see the Microtasker simulator running the 
uh, UC3A AVR32 processor on a simulated EVK1100 at 66 megahertz. We go on to the web browser and we put in the IP address which will also be the same and we find that we have no web pages loaded which is the normal case because we've started with a fresh project. So I go to exactly the same web page folder as before and I double click on the copy all bat to update via FTP. Here we see the process taking place. There it's completed so I can refresh the browser and there we see that we have the same web page is loaded again. So if I go to the application page then I can repeat the upload process. I take exactly the same file as before, start the upload, perform the upload. Watch on the left hand side here is completed and the simulator device also resets as the, um, the real board does so I close this. Now the thing to be aware of is when the project closed all of the flash content was saved to the hard disk which means that if I go to the simulator folder in the project I can see the content of the simulated flash in fact there are two simulated flashes in this case we have the internal flash of the chip and we also have the external SPI based flash as well. Now this is the one which is interesting me because that's where our upload has been saved. So what I do is I go into the bootloader project also into the simulator and I drop this file into there. There we are we have this file in the uh, bootloader project so what I'm going to do now is open up the bootloader project in Microsoft um, in the Visual Studio environment which I've already completed so let's run this code now. Now in this case I'm interested in the details so what I'm doing is I've already put a breakpoint and we're going to step through the code a little bit okay here the SPI is being configured that's uh, configured that's not very interesting so I'm going to come back out of that routine and now we're going to go into the routine of main interest because this is where the code is checking the content of the SPI flash to see whether there is new code waiting for it so let's go into this routine and we can then see that the address where the uploaded content is expected to be is displayed here so that's the first thing I can do check that the address is match that the bootloader is actually looking in the right place in the SPI flash to get our file. So I'm going to return from this routine. What it was doing, it was a file system call which was getting the length of any loaded file. Now we've got a, a length there which seems to be realistic. So what it's going to do is get a block of parameters from the beginning of the file and now it's doing some checking. It's checking that the magic number which is in the uploaded file is matching the magic number of the project which is in fact true in this case because it didn't uh, return. Now it's checking that we have a plausible um, length for the application. This is also good. And what it's doing now is going to do a checksum on the whole content of this file now it's, it'll go around this loop a lot of times so I'm going to just run it to the complete bit. Okay there's a secret key which is also saved it's going to use that and now it's going to check to see whether the code and also the head of the code is matching. So what I've got here is I've got a, a CRC which was uh, calculated across the code. This is a CRC 16 of zero, uh, A008 and let's check what the header says it should be. Okay, it's matching. That's great. That means that everything's matching and uh, it's recognized. So, this is a very simple steps which are going to take place. First of all, 
we're going to, because we know that we have valid data waiting, new software waiting, what we're going to do is we're going to delete the old application to make place for it. That means it's deleting from internal flash. So we've let it do that. It's going to now copy the new code. That means it's going to copy from the SPI uh, location, uh, put that into the new application location. And what it's going to do, it's going to, it's going to do a CRC check over it as well. We're going to let it do that quickly because it's pretty surely going to match. Yes, it does. Now it's going to delete the backup in the SPI flash because it doesn't want to repeat the process each time we start. And then it's going to reset the board. So that was about it. We've just verified that the upload was correct. The bootloader matches this. Everything's going to work fine once you load this to the target. If anything at any of these steps doesn't match, then it's going to fail. Uh, this is going to show very clearly where the deviation is, and it allows us then to also work out why that was, correct it, verify it, and then we complete. Many thanks for watching. For more information about the Microtasker project, the Microtasker bootloader, or the AVR32 support, please visit the Microtasker website.